Uh, just want to remind you guys that uh, of the stuff we've been covering and things like that that you guys need to know. Now, we were working on the Taylor series and the like. And on the Taylor series, you need to know that your five formulas or McLaurin series, which is the Taylor series centered at zero, and you need to have the Taylor series formula memorized. So with the Taylor series, any function f of x is equal to that particular function evaluated at a certain point a plus f prime of a over one factorial times x minus a plus f double prime of a over two factorial times x minus a squared plus f triple prime of a over three factorial times x minus a cubed plus dot dot dot. This is your Taylor series formula that you have memorized. Now, in terms of the binomial formula, binomial series that you have memorized, a binomial uh, form, a function of the form one plus x to the k, that's equal to one plus k times x plus k times k minus one over two factorial times x squared plus k times k minus 1 times k minus 2 over 3 factorial x cubed plus da da da. These are your two forms you need to memorize. Now in terms of um, Maclaurin series, which is a Taylor series centered at zero, you were supposed to have at this point memorized the function series forms of 1 over 1 minus x e to the x, cosine of x, sine of x, and tangent inverse of x. Those are the big five Taylor McLaurin series that you guys need to know. Because what we're gonna be doing is manipulating these guys. Remember, power series are easy to manipulate. But on terms of this Taylor series, these are your terms, x minus a, x minus a squared, x minus a cubed, and these are the coefficients. Your coefficients are the nth derivative at a over n factorial, depending on what the power of the x minus a is. There's a pattern. And I'm telling you that because right now we're doing the web work from uh, section 8.7, and that is, look at this first problem. This first problem gives students a big fit because they don't actually know what to do with the wording of this particular problem. It says this, if f n, that's the nth derivative of f, evaluated at seven, is negative one to the n times n factorial, divided by three to the n times n plus two for n equals zero, one, two, dot, 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 then the Taylor series function for f centered at zero, uh, at, at seven is what? All right, so we know that the formula for the Taylor series is this f of x equals that, what we just wrote down, f of a plus f prime of a over one factorial times x minus a plus f double prime of a over two factorial times x minus a squared plus dot dot dot, which when you write it as a series, it's the sum as n goes from zero to infinity of the nth root of a over n factorial times x minus a to the n power. This is the series formula for this. Now, what they're giving you is the nth derivative at seven. Our centering point is at seven. So my series for the function is gonna be the sum as n goes from zero to infinity of the nth root of, uh, of the nth derivative of f evaluated at seven, which is this negative one to the n, n factorial, over 3 to the n times n plus 2 divided by the formula has n factorial on the bottom times x minus a, a is 7 in this problem, raised to the n. So this is your power series for this function that they gave me the information about the derivative of. Now, you're supposed to clean it up. So they gave you the part, the numerator part of your formula, but you need to clean up the coefficient. Look at it, I got negative one to the n times n factorial divided by three to the n times n plus two divided by n factorial. 
What cancels? Fraction divided by a fraction, invert, multiply, but you should see this. What's going to cancel? And this is where most people are going to mess it up. They don't see what's canceling. What cancels? The n factorials cancel. And when the n factorials cancel, you're left with, and this is what goes in the blank on web work, negative 1 to the n divided by 3 to the n times n plus 2 times x minus 7 to the n. This is what you have to type in on web work. The n factorial part in that numerator is going to cancel out. So a lot of people just try to put this whole thing into their problem, or they'll put this in there with n factorial on the bottom. But no, web work's not going to count that. You've got to clean it up. Now, you're supposed to write this guy out. So here we go. To write this thing out, this series starts with 0. So this is n equals 0. This will be n equals 1, n equals 2, n equals 3. That's what we need. So n equals 0, plug 0 in this thing. Negative 1 to the 0 is 1. 3 to the 0 is uh, 1. And one, a 0 plus 2 is 2, so that gives you... <coughs> one half. Now plug in one. Negative one to the first is going to be negative one. Three to the first is three. One plus two is three and three times three is nine times x minus seven to the first. When n equals two, negative one squared is back to positive one over three squared which is nine and two plus two which is four and nine times four is 36 times x minus 7 squared. And the last one I'm going to do is I'm going to plug in 3. Negative 1 cubed is back to negative 1 over 3 cubed is uh, 27 times 3 plus 2 is 5. So now it's time for the end 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 calculator here. 27 times 5 is 135 times x minus 7 to the third power. So these are my coefficients when I line them up. Does that make sense? Questions? Now, the next one I want you guys to focus on because you tend to see a problem like this. This is using the binomial series expansion. You're supposed to write this sucker out. Now, <clears throat> what you have memorized from before is this. When you have the form of 1 plus x to the k, that's equal to 1 plus kx plus k times k minus 1 over 2 factorial times x squared plus k times k minus 1 times k minus 2 over 3 factorial x cubed plus dot dot dot. There's my binomial series expansion. My problem is this function doesn't look like 1 plus x to the k. So let's make it look like this. It's algebra. So h of x is equal to, I don't like stuff on the bottom, so I'm going to bring it to the top. That's going to give me 3 plus x to the negative fifth. <coughs> but my problem is, is I need to have a 1 in this position. My problem is where the 3 is at. So let me show you what you need to do in terms of the algebra here. We're on the right track, but you made the move too early. Here, let's focus on what h of x is. h of x is equal to... 1 over 3 plus x to the fifth. I want a 1 in that 3 position. What I'm going to do is inside the parentheses is I'm going to factor out a 3. Here's the trick. This will be 1 over parentheses, 3 times parentheses, 1 plus, factoring a 3 out of 3 leaves you with a 1. Factoring a 3 out of an x leaves you with an x over 3. Close parentheses, close parentheses, raised to the fifth power. Inside the parentheses, so here's the trick right here, is I've actually factored out the 3 of the stuff inside the parentheses, still to the fifth power. But factoring turns things into multiplication. And with multiplication division, you get to distribute your power. So this is going to give you 1 over 3 to the fifth times 1 plus x over 3 to the fifth power. And now, I'm going to clean this up. This will be 1 over 3 to 5th. That's a constant. Leave them alone. And I'm going to bring this guy up to the top, and that's going to give me 1 plus x over 3 to the negative 5. And this is of this form right here. You do have a function out front. What is 3 raised to the 5th? That is 243. 
So this is 1 over 243 times 1 plus x over 3 to the negative 5. So now that I analyze this part, I can tell you that this, h of x is going to be equal to 1 over 243. And now I'm just leaving my constant out front bracket. Now with this particular form, I can tell you that h, I should be k, k is my power, it's equal to negative 5. And instead of x, what do I have? Instead of x on the original binomial formula, instead of x, what do I have? x over 3. So i got to replace x with x over 3. So now I'm going to use my binomial formula on just this part right here. 8k is equal to negative 5, and I replace x with x over 3 into my formula. So here we go. First term is 1 plus k. K is equal to negative 5 times x. Replace x with x over 3. Plus k is negative 5 times k minus 1, which is negative 6, divided by 2 factorial times x squared. But in place of x, we're putting an x over 3 squared. Plus k, which is negative 5, times k minus 1, which is negative 6, times k minus 2, which would be negative 7, over 3 factorial. Replace x with x over 3, and it's cubed, plus dot, dot, dot. Now, I've got to clean up the algebra. So, h of x is going to be equal to 1 over 243 times 1 What's a negative 5 times x over 3? That gives you minus 5 over 3x. On this one, I've got negative 5 times negative 6 divided by 2 factorial. 2 factorial is what? 2 times 1, which is 2. That gives me 15. But then I got x squared over 3 squared. 3 squared is 9. So I'm going to divide that by 9 and make a fraction out of it. And I get plus 5 thirds. So that would be plus 5 thirds x squared. Now I've got to write this term here. This is going to be negative 5 times negative 6 times negative 7 divided by 3 factorial. 3 times 2 times 1. That's equal to uh, 6 divided by 6. And I end up getting negative 35 here. But then this is 3 cubed. 3 cubed is 27, and that's on the denominator. So divided by 27. And that gives me pretty much minus 35 over 27x cubed. Plus da da da. But I'm not done yet. All I did was just clean up my coefficients in front of my x's, including that x divided by three whatever power it is the last thing you got to do to this problem is you remember that constant i had to pull out front you need to distribute it <coughs> this gives you h of x is equal to one over 243 minus again putting it on the calculator here you guys can see it one divided by 243 times a negative five over three gives me, and converting it to a fraction for ease, negative 5 over 729. So this will be minus 5 over 729x. This will be plus 1 over 243 times a positive 5 over 3. Well, I get the same thing, but I'll be a plus 5 over 729x squared. And then your last one. The last one is I've got a parentheses 1 divided by 243 times a negative 35 divided by a 27 which gives me a decimal converting it to a fraction is minus 35 over 6,561 x cubed plus dot dot dot. <coughs> now to go back and answer the web work question here you're supposed to type in the coefficients on this guy. So what was my constant term? 
1 over 243. What is my coefficient front of the x? It's a minus 5 over 729. What's the coefficient front of the x squared? It's a plus 5 over 729. And then the last one for x cubed, but all they wanted was uh, through x squared, so I'm done. And there's my answer. Does that make sense? Questions? Now, turn the page. <laughs> Take a look at this problem here. It says this. Use the Maclaurin series derived in this section to obtain a Maclaurin series for the given functions and enter the first three non-zero terms. This is the beginning of the type of stuff we're going to do to you guys on the final exam. And I promise you, on the free response part of the final exam, they're going to have a question just like this. That means it's going to be big point totals. You've got to make sure you know how to do this stuff. And if I know they're going to put it on the final exam, you know what's going to be on my next test, something very similar. So let's take a look at this guy. And remember, what we're going to do is we're going to build this Maclaurin series based on if I can just get one, a series out of part of it, I can extend it to create a series for the whole thing. So in this problem, I want a Maclaurin series for x times the tangent inverse of 4x. Well, you've got to start with what you know. We have memorized the Maclaurin series for the tangent inverse of x. If you haven't, well, you're in deep trouble in this section. This is a big section, and that last part, you got to memorize those five Maclaurin series. Remember, there's a pattern here. The Maclaurin series for the tangent inverse of x and the Maclaurin series for the sine of x are almost the same thing, except the tangent inverse doesn't have the little factorials in the denominator. But other than that, it's the same series. So here we go. It is x minus x cubed over 3 plus x to the fifth over 5 minus x to the seventh over 7 plus dot, dot, dot. Catch a pattern. That's my Maclaurin series for the tangent inverse of x. That's where I start building, based upon what we know. Now, we love power series because they're easy to manipulate. Think computer science and how to program. I don't want tangent inverse of x. My problem has what? Tangent inverse of 4x. So what do I do? Well, to create the power series or Maclaurin series for the tangent inverse of 4x, I replace x with 4x. So this is equal to 4x minus 4x quantity cubed over 3 plus 4x to the 5th over 5 minus 4x to the 7th over 7 plus dot, dot, dot. you got to clean them up, though. So cleaning this stuff up, this is the tangent inverse of 4x Maclaurin series, which is 4x minus 4 cubed, putting on the old handy-dandy calculator here, 4 cubed is uh, 64, so that would be 64x cubed over 3, plus 4 to the 5th, 4 to the 5th power is 1,024x to the 5th over 5, minus 4 to the 7th is 16,384 over 7x to the 7th plus dot dot dot. All I did was distribute my power throughout. <coughs> Does that make sense? Now we got the Maclaurin series for the tangent inverse of 4x. What I really want is for the function. f of x is equal to x times that tangent inverse of 4x, so we can build him. So replace, you know, x stays there, but replace the tangent inverse of 4x with this Maclaurin series, 4x minus 64 over 3 x cubed plus 1,024 over 5 x to the fifth minus 16,384 over 7 x to the seventh plus dot dot dot. And the last thing you want to do is clean them up. And how do I clean this up? Well, I got this x times all this Maclaurin series. I'm going to distribute the x. So this gives me my function, which is x times the tangent inverse of 4x actually equals 
4x squared minus 64 over 3x times x cubed is x to the fourth plus 1024 over 5 x to the fifth times x makes it x to the sixth minus 16,384 over 7 x to the eighth plus dot 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 but now this is web work on the test you should always do this on the final exam you should always do this Always do more terms than you need because you never know when something's going to cancel or whatever. So always do more terms and then at the end, give them what they want. In this problem, how many terms did they actually ask me to write out? Only three non-zero terms. One, two, three. So all I need is the first three terms. So therefore, to answer the question, f of x, which is the x times the tangent inverse of 4x, is going to be 4x squared minus 64 thirds x to the fourth plus 1,024 over 5, x is 6. You know, officially plus dot, 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 but those are the three terms that I have to put on web work. See, because you see, on a computer, if you give more than, more than the terms you're supposed to give, you're supposed to give, the web computer's going to count it wrong. On the final exam and the test, we're not going to count it wrong. We're going to obviously count it right. If you gave us more than we required, that's even better. Okay, so more is always better. And also with the algebra you're manipulating. Now remember, always write out some more stuff because you never know what's going to cancel. Okay? Does that make sense? So, build this McLaurin series. I have here f of x is equal to x cubed times e to the negative x over 2. Well, where do I start? You start with what you know. Do you have a McLaurin series for part of this thing that you can deal with? Sure. I got a McLaurin series for e to the x. I got that one memorized. What is that? That is 1 plus x over officially 1 factorial plus x squared over 2 factorial plus x cubed over 3 factorial plus dot, dot, dot. That is my classic McLaurin series for e to the x, pure memorization. And that's probably one of the easier ones to memorize. So, but my problem is, instead of e to the x, I got e to the negative x over 2. So to create this McLaurin series for e to the negative x over 2, again, classic computer science, all I do is substitute it. I'm going to replace x with negative x over 2. This will give me 1 plus negative x divided by 2 over 1 factorial plus negative x divided by 2 squared over 2 factorial plus negative x over 2 cubed over 3 factorial plus dot dot dot. Cleaning this guy up, this is going to give me e to the negative x over 2 is 1 minus x over 2. One factorial is 1, so it's minus x divided by 2. Now, a negative squared is a positive. That becomes plus x squared. 2 squared is 4 on the bottom, and 2 factorial, which is 2 times 1, which is 2 on the bottom. 4 on the bottom times 2 on the bottom makes what? 8 on the bottom. So that becomes 1 minus x over 2 plus x squared over 8. Negative 1 cubed is back to negative x cubed. 2 cubed is 8 on the bottom. 3 factorial is 3 times 2 times 1, which is 6 on the bottom. 8 on the bottom times 6 on the bottom is 48 in the denominator on the bottom. Just showing you the basic math without actually using my calculator so much. Does that make sense? This is, clean it up, you got to, because you know this is calculus class. So let me show you what we're gonna make you guys do at the end of this kind of problem, just FYI. All right, so here it is. We built this guy. Now let's build the actual function. F of x is equal to x cubed times e to the negative x over two. That's x cubed times, replace e to the negative x over 2 with its McLaurin series of 1 minus x over 2 plus x squared over 8 minus x cubed over 48 plus dot, dot, dot. And I'm going to clean it up, so I'm going to distribute this guy. So my f of x, my function is going to be x cubed e to the negative x over 2 equals x cubed minus x cubed times uh, x is x to the fourth over 2 plus x cubed times x squared is x to the fifth over eight, minus x cubed times negative x cubed is minus x to the sixth over 48, plus dot, dot, dot. 
And then this is a web work problem. So again, they ask you for the first three non-zero terms. So for, for web work answer, f of x, which is equal to x cubed times e to the negative x over two is equal to x cubed minus x to the fourth over two plus x to the fifth over eight. And that's what you're supposed to type into the web work. But I was always telling you, you know what we're gonna do in part number C on the multiple choice? I mean, on the free response part of the exam. We're gonna find you to integrate. Give me a McLaurin series for the integral of x cubed e to the negative x over two. So if you wanna integrate this guy, well, instead of integrating that, which is a kind of a pain in the butt, you can integrate this guy. And then you can integrate each one of these terms, which is a classic power rule. Again, think programming. Tell the computer to add one to the exponent and divide by the exponent plus one in the denominator and clean it up. And then we're gonna make you evaluate it from zero to 0 0.5 or something like that, plug in top, plug in bottom. And then you can mimic what the computer does when we actually hit the uh, integral button on our calculator. It's programming. And there's a lot more to this. That's why my mechanical, electrical, civil engineers, you guys are gonna be beating this stuff to death as higher level classes. And everybody in here, for the most part, has to go through DFEQ. You'll see this stuff again, trust me. You need to know this stuff. All right, does that make sense? All right, so an example of, again, programming and the like, here's a problem. It says use the, the series to evaluate the following limits. So the first thing we want you to do, because we did in part, is we want to find a Maclaurin series for one plus four x minus e to the four x over x squared, and then we're gonna take the limit as x approaches zero. So here we go. I've got to build a Maclaurin series for this guy. Well, as I look at it, well, I got one plus four x, no worries there, but I got an e in the problem, so that's where I'm gonna start with my Maclaurin series and replace at least that part with its relative Maclaurin series. But I don't have e to the four x memorized. What I have memorized in terms of those five Maclaurin series that no doubt we're gonna use on any kind of test or final exam, and this one is the e to the x. Again, e to the x Maclaurin series is one plus x over one factorial, plus x squared over two factorial, plus x cubed over three factorial, plus dot, dot, dot. So e to the four x would be equal to one plus four x over one factorial, plus four x squared over two factorial, plus four x cubed over three factorial. And like I said, you should have the ability to catch patterns. Let's just write down one more term because you never know when you need more terms. Uh, what would the next term be? 4x to the fourth over four factorial. Key to math, catch a pattern. Even though I didn't write it down, you should be able to see that next pattern. So now, cleaning it up, the Maclaurin series for e to the four x is gonna be one plus four x divided by one factorial is uh, four x. Plus uh, four x quantity squared, that's gonna give me 16 x squared divided by two factorial. Two factorial is uh, two times one, which is two. 16 divided by two is eight. So this is gonna be eight x squared plus four cubed. Four cubed is 64. So this is gonna be 64 x cubed divided by three factorial. Three factorial is uh, three times two times one, which is six. 64 divided by six is, I'm gonna reduce the fraction. I got 32 thirds. So this will be 32 thirds x cubed. And why not, one more for good placement here, four to the fourth. Four raised to the fourth power is 256, divided by four factorial. Four times three times two times one, that's 24. 256 divided by 24, and I'm gonna write that up here, this is 256 x to the fourth over 24. So 256 divided by 24 is again uh, 32 thirds. That'd be plus 32 thirds x to the fourth plus dot, dot, dot. This is my Maclaurin series for e to the 4x. Now, plug it into your function. One plus 4x minus e to the 4x would be equal to, oh, divided by x squared there, uh, would be equal to one plus 4x minus parentheses, one plus 4x plus 8x squared plus 32 thirds x cubed 
plus 32 thirds x to the fourth plus dot 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 all over x squared. Now, this is a game of algebra. That negative, notice the one if we use the parentheses here, that negative will distribute. And when it distributes, you get 1 plus 4x minus 1 minus 4x minus 8x squared minus 32 thirds x cubed minus 32 thirds x to the fourth plus dot 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 all over x squared something cancels. That's why you always write more terms than you need because you never know how many terms are going to cancel here. In this case, the first two terms cancel. What cancels here? 1 minus 1 plus 4x minus 4x. And you are left with this negative 8x squared minus 32 thirds x cubed minus 32 thirds x to the fourth plus dot 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 divided by x squared. So, I'm dividing by a single term. We're going to clean this up. But when you divide by a single term, you take that single term and put it under any, each term in the numerator all the way down the line. What is negative 8x squared divided by x squared? Negative 8. Minus what is 32 thirds x cubed divided by x squared? That's minus 32 thirds x. Minus 32 thirds x to the fourth divided by x squared is x squared plus dot dot dot. This ends up becoming my Maclaurin series, and I have at least three terms here for the 1 plus 4x minus e to the 4x over x squared. But the purpose of this problem is actually to evaluate a limit. So to do the limit, this would be the limit as x approaches 0 of 1 plus 4x minus e to the 4x over x squared. This would be equal to the limit as x approaches 0 of minus 8 minus 32 thirds x minus 32 thirds x squared plus dot dot dot. And what's the first rule of limit? Plug it in. So when you plug it in, you don't write limit anymore. It's negative 8 minus 32 thirds times 0 minus 32 thirds times 0 squared plus dot dot dot. All the terms when you plug in zero in end up canceling, and what is my solution? Negative eight. Now, granted, we have done this problem before in calculus one. The limit as x approaches zero of one plus four x minus e to the four x over x squared. First row of limits, plug in the number. You get, uh, when you plug in the number, you get zero divided by zero. In calculus one, when you got zero over zero, what were you supposed to do? L'Hopital's rule. So you got to take the root of the top over the root of the bottom. Then you replug in the limit. Then you got zero over zero again. So then what do you got to do? L'Hopital it again. Drew the top over the root of the bottom. And then eventually you'll get negative eight. How do I program a computer to do that? That's my question. Recognize zero over zero and take the root of the top over the root of the bottom. And there's different forms for take the root of one's a polynomial, one's an e to the x, and you got to talk about how to program the derivative of e to the x or e to a function, that type of stuff. Here's the deal. If I can replace any kind of, especially with a transcendental uh, function in this thing, like e to the 4x, with its uh, Maclaurin series, power series representation, and clean them up, then you got a series. And then to evaluate a limit as x approaches whatever number you want, first rule of limits is to do what? Plug in the number. And I actually didn't take the derivative of anybody or anything like that. All I had to do was just clean this guy up with its power series and plug in and all the terms with x and it go to zero, leaves you with a negative eight. Think programming and how to get the computers and calculators to do what you want them to do without so much effort. Does that make sense? Well, that is the end of calculus two. However, I have brought with me something that you guys haven't seen, which is not on the internet anywhere to be had until I'm showing it to you right now. This is last semester's final exam. Usually we hold these things in reserve, but you're my students, you get special privileges here. So I'm showing you what last semester's final exam looked like. I've got what, 10, 15 more minutes left in class here. So let's take a look at this thing from two purposes. To help start preparing you for the final exam. 
There is going to be a review for the final exam. I'll post some information on our website for you guys. That'll be on reading day. I'll let you know about that later. Um, and you got your homework set due, and we're going to cover that at the review session. So I'm going to make one, one more video for this stuff. But I just want to take the last few minutes of this class, and I want to sit there and look through the old final exam, last semester's final exam. But in particular, I'm trying to prepare you for your fourth test, but you need to be prepared for this thing altogether. Now, first off, in terms of the final exam, what are we going to hit you hard on? Most important, the most important out of all things we covered. What is it? Integrals. We're going to beat you to death with integrals. Integrate, integrate. Basic rules, use substitution, integration by parts, partial fractions, uh, all the different techniques, including improper integrals and all things we did with that stuff. We're going to beat you to death with uh, pumping crap out of a tank. We're going to make, bring baby Jessica out of a well. We're going to give you some problems where you're doing lifting problems and spring problems. And we're also going to give you 25% of your exam is going to be on test before material. It's going to be on series, sequences and series, and especially this Taylor series, McLaurin series, because you do so much with them. So let's take a look at this thing. And I'm only going to focus on, and I'll do for you guys, the questions from chapter um, uh, four material. All right, this first part, and again, I'm going to go through this rather quickly because the interesting ones are with the free response questions, just to let you guys know. So the first part of as I look through this thing as well, this is the free response part. I was going to do that one last though. Hold on, let me come over here, part number, and I'm back with you. Here's part number one. Here it is, part number one. No calculator, no calculator. What are you going to do? Uh, integrate, 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 area to curve stuff. Don't forget that. So if you're paying attention, and actually you can pause my video here and stop and actually do the problem. All right, so uh, turn the page. More integrals, more integrals. And look. More integrals, improper integrals. So you've got to integrate it and then take limits as A approaches infinity stuff there. Turn the page. Riemann sum integrals. So you know, you've got to calculate your delta x and be able to do a left or right Riemann sums with its four partitions. Another integral. This is, look at this one. This is an integral, but then they want you to take the derivative of it. That's called fundamental theorem of calculus. Derivative of integral cancels. So all you've got to do is plug in two into this function right here. What do you got here? Oh, yep, what a surprise. You're going to uh, find the volume and rotating this thing about what, the uh, x-axis or something like that. This one you're going to integrate, use substitution. This one you're going to integrate, use substitution, plug in top, minus plug in bottom. So they put bounds on this thing. Remember, no calculator, so they put letters on the thing. Oh, they got a series problem. Here it is. Let's see if we can do this one. Which of the following tests successfully determines whether this guy N, the sum is N goes from 1 to infinity of N plus 1 over N squared plus 1, converges or diverges. Before you even look at the answers, they're talking about uh, a comparison with, with which, which test here. What would you use? If I was going to do a comparison test, remember, when you got polynomials over polynomials, the degree term is your leading guy. He's your commander. So the numerator, I got an, a, an N in the numerator. I got an N squared in the denominator. I don't care about the rest of it. What is, so this is equivalent to, the sum as n goes from 1 to infinity of n over n squared. What's n over n squared also known as? 1 over n. This dude's got a name. What's his name? Harmonic, harmonic series. What does the harmonic series do? Diverge. diverge. This thing's going to diverge, but I would compare it to the harmonic series. So if the thing's going to be a divergent, okay, uh, by, by, by the divergence test, no, the, the divergence test says I've got to take the limit as n approaching infinity of the sequence part. If I don't get zero, then it's going to diverge. Well, this thing does go to zero, so this is out. Uh, I would do a comparison test with, I got two choices here, one over n or one over n squared. Which one would you compare to? Yeah, pretty much one over n because that's wrong. Would you ever use the ratio test on this problem? When do you use a ratio test? Powers of n and or factorials. I don't see any one of those in this problem, so this is completely out. Okay. And I would compare it to 1 over n. Uh, no, I mean, excuse me, sum as n goes to 1 over n. No, it's 1 over n. This is the wrong guy to compare to. Answers B. Does that make sense? It's not hard as long as you know what you're doing. So this is a comparison test. But the trick is, what do you compare it to? Uh, degree at the top or degree at the bottom. Clean it up. That's the guy you can compare it to. And that was a P series or harmonic series. This one was partial fraction integration because the denominator at, at uh, integral in which state is correct they're integrating the natural log of x to the fifth power and you use integration by parts to figure this guy out 
okay? Part number two, this part with the calculator, but trust me, most of you don't even need a calculator on. And just going through it, yep, first problem right here is a series problem. Find the interval of convergence of this guy. How do you find interval convergence? What are you going to use? Anytime you hear the word, find the interval of convergence, use ratio test. Works every time. Okay, but then you got to test the endpoints. So on this one, I'm going to do the limit as n approaches infinity, the absolute value of a n plus 1 over a n. That's equal to the limit as n approaches infinity of the absolute value of x minus 1 to the n plus 1 over n plus 1 squared divided by x minus 1 to the n over n squared. Invert and multiply. This is equal to the limit as n approaches infinity of the absolute value of x minus 1 to the n plus 1 divided by n plus 1 squared. Invert and multiply. The n squared shows up on top and the x minus 1 to the n is on the bottom. Clean this stuff up. x minus 1 to the n plus 1 is x minus 1 times x minus 1 to the n and the x minus 1 to the n's cancel. Leaves you with x minus 1 on top. Now, when you take the limit as n approaches infinity of this guy, n squared over n plus 1 squared, the same thing as n over n plus 1 squared. And remember, you take the limit as n approaches infinity of wherever the n's are located at. The n's are on the inside here. This thing goes to 1, and 1 squared is 1. So this gives you your L, which is the absolute value of what's left, which is x minus 1. But to configure out, this is the ratio test. And for the ratio test to converge, whatever's left over has to be strictly less than 1. Solve the inequality here. This would be negative, uh, be negative 1 is less than x minus 1, which is less than 1. Solving for x, add 1 to all sides. I get 0 is less than x, which is less than 2. Which means... The answer is either got to be D or E on this problem. Does that make sense? But then what's the last thing I got to do? Test the endpoints. When I test the endpoints, I got the sum as n goes from 1 to infinity of plugging in x is 0. This will be 0 minus 1 to the n over n squared. This is sum as n goes from 1 to infinity of negative 1 to the n over n squared. What kind of series is negative one sum of negative 1 to the n over n squared? alternating series so I would use the alternating series test where the bn is 1 over n squared and I'll just check that off that that converges because I'm trying to save some time here and then the uh, so I want that point so this was um, x equals 0 we plugged in so I want that guy so I want to include it which tells me this is going to be my answer right here 2 is definitely going to work because when I plug in 2 x equals 2 I get the sum as n goes from 1 to infinity of 1 over this is, uh, remember, 2 minus 1, which is 1, e to the n power, 1 to the n power is 1, over n squared. What kind of, what that, what's that guy's name? P series, and what does the P series do? P equals 2, it converges. So they both converge, so the answer is D there. Does that ring a bell? Good, because you'll see it again on uh, Monday. All right, so... Um, this one is particle moves. They're talking about average velocities. So you're going to have to get integrate and get, uh, um, uh, what do they got here? They got the velocity at time t, and they're about average velocity. Um, here, we're talking about partial fractions. Here's another series problem right here. Which of the statements is true for this series? The sum as n goes from 0 to infinity of negative 2 to the n divided by 3 to the n plus 1. <coughs> Well, what kind of series is this, dude? Well, yeah, no, it's not a power series. There's no X in this thing. What kind of series? Geometric series. Outstanding. How do you know it's a geometric series? It's a series with nothing but numbers raised to ends, right? That makes geometric series. So, to do the geometric series, now they started with this guy with n equals 0. The geometric series for n equals 0 is this formula. Sum as n goes from 0 to infinity of a r to the n. So I need an n on this stuff. I got n plus 1. So I got the sum as n goes from 0 to infinity of negative 2 to the n over 3 to the n plus 1 is 3 times 3 to the n. So when I put this stuff together, I get the sum as n goes from 0 to infinity of 1 third times negative 2 thirds to the n. A 
is equal to one third. R is negative two thirds. So we know the geometric series when the absolute value of R, which is absolute value of negative two thirds, which is two thirds, is less than one, it converges to the formula A over one minus R. So this would be equal to A, which is one third over one minus negative two thirds. Minus minus is a plus. So this is one third divided by one plus two thirds is five thirds. Invert and multiply, that's one third times three over five. Threes cancel, I got one fifth on this guy. So it converges to one fifth. <coughs> Ring a bell? Good practicing. All right, so this one right here is uh, talking about arc length. So you need to know your arc length formulas. Here's an old spring problem right here where you need to know work is equal to the integral of kx dx and pay, figure out what k is based upon their information. Oh good, another series. Three points. Here it is, a blessing. Merry Christmas. All you gotta do is memorize something or other. What is the Maclaurin series for e to the x cubed? Well, do you have the Maclaurin series, mem oh, sorry, e to the x squared. Do you have the Maclaurin series memorized for e to the x? Sure you do. It's one plus x over one factorial plus x squared over two factorial plus dot, dot, dot. So for e to the x squared, what am I gonna do? Plug in x squared, that'd be one plus x squared over one factorial plus x squared squared over two factorial plus dot, plus dot, 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 which is one plus x squared over one factorial plus x to the fourth over two factorial. And then you gotta do is just pick them out. Let's see here, one plus x squared, x squared, one factorial is one, x to the fourth over four, answer C. Just take your time and make sure you pick the right dude out of the lineup. Does that make sense? All right, here's a sequence question here. Uh, the, the AN is equal to N cubed plus one over two N squared plus one. Uh, which of the following is going to be true about the sequence? They're talking about converging or diverging. To figure it out, you need to take the limit as N approaches infinity of N cubed plus one over two N squared plus one. Well, if you notice the degree of the top is bigger than the degree of the bottom, you know the answer blows up infinity. So the answer is E. But for you people that want to know, L'Hopital rule it, because you plug it in, you get infinity over infinity. So apply L'Hopital's rule. This will be the limit as n approach infinity of 3n <coughs> squared over 4n. One of your n's cancel, so this is limit as n approaches infinity of 3n over 4 when you cancel it out. Plug in infinity. 3 fourths of infinity is infinity. It is divergent. So the answer is E. Look at this one here. It says find the Taylor expansion for this guy here. X to the fifth minus th uh, three X plus one about A equals one. This problem right here, people died because all they wanted you to do was find the coefficient of X minus one cubed. So remember, your Taylor series F of X is equal to F of A plus F prime of A over one factorial times X minus A plus F double prime of A over two factorial times X minus A squared plus F triple prime of A over three factorial times X minus A cubed. A is equal to one in this problem. So for this term here, it's F triple prime of one over three factorial times X minus one cubed. What is the triple prime of one? F of X is equal to X to the fifth minus three X plus one. The first derivative is five X to the fourth minus three X. The second derivative is 20x cubed minus three. The third derivative is 60x squared, 60x squared. So F triple prime of one is 60 times one squared, which is 60, but the coefficient is gonna be 60 over three factorial times x minus one cubed. And what's 60 divided by three factorial? That's 60 divided by six, which is 10. The answer is B. Notice how they did this Taylor series kind of a problem. We have more series, but the last couple of problems here is this one. This one is just writing out this one. I would use the alternating series and then just add them up to guesstimate what it's going to converge to. Uh, this one right here is you just basically have to go through and uh, only one of the series converges. Which one's going to converge? 
Uh, well, this alternating series right here, this is a P series, P is a half, it converges, diverges test. The answer is B right there. But I want to let you guys see it. For those that want to see this thing, look at the final exam. This is part three, the free response part, just to show you what they're going to do to you guys. This one is a uh, cylindrical shells and disk method volume problem. This one right here is we're going to take this particular region and find the centroid, the center of mass, and they wanted you to find just the y coordinate of this center of mass. This one is uh, using midpoint formulas uh, to actually find the, basically approximate this integral using the midpoint formulas. And you'll notice that it's alternating, so you can use the, since you're using midpoint, you can use the uh, alternating uh, midpoint formula for this guy right here and be able to figure this thing out. Actually, it won't be alternating, but you can use the midpoint formula for this. But look at this one right here. This is what I want to show you guys. Look at number four. They gave you guys the uh, McLaurin series for e to the negative x squared. They're going to want you to approximate the integral for this guy. So what you do is you've got to show them the work. Replace e to the negative x squared with the McLaurin series and then integrate the McLaurin series, then plug in top minus plug in bottom and get your answer. And then knowing the fact that this was an alternating series, you can actually use the alternating series estimation theorem by basically figuring out your error. How many terms did you use up here? And then it'll be the next term up will give you the error. You can use this stuff from the previous section of alternating series and the like. So interesting problem there. And the last one is, what a surprise, they didn't even draw the tank for you. They gave you a spherical tank, radius one, and you had to pump all the water out of it. So there you go. Study hard on this stuff, and I'll see you guys at the review session for those that come. See you guys then.